There are so many good reasons to go for Charles Schwab ETFs. They are the fifth largest ETF provider globally by assets under management, right behind BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street and Invesco. And with an average expense ratio of 0.1% for all of their ETFs, they have some of the cheapest ETFs out there. In this video, we will take a closer look at four of the best Charles Schwab ETFs that are very different in their investment goal, but all best in class in their categories. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Let's look at the first no-brainer Charles Schwab ETF, the Schwab US Broad Market ETF, ticker symbol SCHB. The objective of the SCHB is to track, as the name says, the broad US stock market, so not just the 500 companies of the S&P. S&P 500. So compared to S&P 500 ETFs, this ETF gives you access to more companies and therefore a higher diversification. The SCHB has an expense ratio of 0.03%, which is very low. It means that an ETF provider, in this case Charles Schwab, charges three basis points per year on your invested amount. For an invested amount of $1,000, that would be $3 per year. This makes the SCHB one of the cheapest ETFs out there. It's performance in the last 10 years was strong with an annual return of over 11% in line with the performance of S&P 500 ETFs. This ETF has a fund size of $19 billion which puts it in the top 100 of the largest ETFs globally. A high fund size is important because it shows you how frequently an ETF is traded. Make sure to only invest in ETFs with a fund size of $100 million and more. This ETF invests in almost 2,500 companies so quite quite diversified, which is nice. The 10 largest holdings of this ETF make up 23% of the fund, which might seem very high. And that's because this ETF, like most ETFs, is a market cap weighted index. It means that companies with a higher value also make up a higher share of the ETF. And lastly, dividends are paid out quarterly with a dividend yield of 1.6%. The SCHB gives you easy and broad access to the US stock market, an absolute no-brainer ETF to get started with. But here is a piece of advice which I bring up in almost all of my videos. Investing in one country only is risky because you lack diversification. In the last hundreds of years, there were many cases where investors that were only invested in one country saw huge drawdowns in their portfolios. The best way to protect your investments is to simply invest in all of the countries so that local stock market crash can be absorbed by your portfolio. That's why it makes sense to invest globally and that brings us to ETF number two of this video, the Schwab International Equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHF. And that one invests not just in one country, Country, but 25 developed countries, important, excluding the US. So this ETF is a great addition to any US ETF you already have because you get zero overlaps. The SCHF has an expense ratio of 0.06%, so only slightly higher than the first ETF that we looked at, but it also makes perfect sense because the SCHF invests in not so efficient capital markets like Poland and Portugal. Considering what the this ETF does and how global it invests, it still has a very competitive expense ratio. Its performance in the last 10 years was okay, not more, with an annual return of 3%. That's not great, but also not super bad, but it's over 7% lower than an S&P 500 ETF would have gotten you per year. So what has gotten into me to suggest an ETF like this? Well, it's true that international stocks haven't performed too great in the last decade, but if you look at the decades before that, then international stocks have regularly outperformed US stocks, so now might be a good time to get into it. The fund size is $24 billion, making it the fourth largest ex-US ETF globally. This ETF invests in 1,500 companies. The top 10 holdings make up 12% of the fund, which is way more balanced than the first ETF we looked at. The SCHF invests in 25 developed countries. The countries with the highest exposure are Japan with 20%, the UK and Canada with 13 and 9%. With most ETFs that include the US, for example, you have a very high exposure, sometimes more than 50% into US stocks. But with the SCHF, you have a very 
nice balance, there isn't a single country that dominates this ETF. Dividends are paid out semi-annually with an incredible dividend yield of 3%. So the first two ETFs that we looked at are core ETFs that should be the center of your portfolio. The next two ETFs that I will show you should only be seen as your satellite in your core satellite portfolio. So more active bets on certain factors or sectors. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then check out the video in the link. If you would have to watch one video only from the ones that I suggested, then I would highly recommend watching this one. The next ETF can serve as a hedge during times of stagflation, but what's stagflation? The word itself is a combination of two very nasty words, stagnation and inflation. It describes a period in which the economy is growing slowly or not at all, with high unemployment, whilst inflation is going up faster than usually. I made a dedicated video on this topic, reviewing what asset classes did best during the last period of stagflation. It turns out real estate could give you dependable returns without much volatility. Check out the video in the link if you want to find out which asset class did best. And that brings us to ETF number three, the Schwab US REIT ETF, ticker symbol SCHH. This ETF will give you easy access to US REITs. REIT is short for Real Estate Investment Trust. That's a trust company that owns and operates properties like houses, apartments, warehouses, malls, and hotels. The SCHH has an expense ratio of only 0.07%, the cheapest REIT ETF I have ever come across, but hey, let me know in the comment section below if you found an even cheaper one. Its performance in the last 10 years was okay with an annual return of over 4%, again, 7% lower than the S&P 500. This ETF has a fund size of $5 billion, making it the second largest REIT ETF right after Vanguard's VNQ. The SCHH invests in 135 REITs, so it invests in almost all US REITs that are currently available. And 135 holdings might seem like a very low number, but if you think about it, a REIT ETF does nothing else but invest in other REITs that hold thousands of properties themselves. What you ultimately end up holding is a huge portfolio of properties. The top 10 holdings make up 43% of the fund, and that's high. If we have a look at the investment breakdown, you will see that the SCHH mainly invests in specialized REITs with 40%. These are REITs that don't fit in any of the other REIT sectors. Examples are movie theaters, casinos, farmland, and so on. The next largest sectors are residential, industrial, and retail REITs. Dividends are paid out quarterly with a dividend yield of 3.3%. This is probably the cheapest and most diversified REIT ETF, but please note that an S&P 500 ETF, for example, already has an exposure to the real estate sector with 2.8%. What we have seen in 2022 so far is a brutal sell-off of tech stocks. Now, I'm not a big fan of jumping from one factor ETF to another, but the interest rate environment and the plans of the Fed to increase interest rates even more could change the investment environment for many years to come. We could already see a rotation of capital from growth stocks to safer stocks that have reliable cash flows. That could be the chance for dividend stocks. This ETF is for investors that want easy access to dividend stocks. The Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHD. This ETF tracks the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index. This index only includes companies that fulfill the following criteria, a minimum of 10 consecutive years of dividend payments and a minimum market cap of $500 million. The SCHD has an expense ratio of 0.06%, which is super low considering what it does. All ETFs of this video actually have an expense ratio of below 0.07%. This ETF's performance in the last 10 years was amazing with an annual return of 12%, even beating the S&P 500 over that time. And it has a lot of momentum in the last year. This ETF only lost 7% at a time where S&P 500 ETFs lost over 15%. This ETF has a fund size of $37 billion, making it the largest Charles Schwab ETF and the third largest dividend ETF globally. This ETF invests in 103 companies the top 10 holdings make up 40% of the fund, so quite top heavy. If we have a look at the sector breakdown, there is a big surprise. The sector with the biggest exposure is tech, which you usually don't see in the top three sectors with dividend ETFs. Tech is closely followed by financials with 19% and consumer staples with 14%. 
Dividends are paid out quarterly with a strong dividend yield of 3.6%. I'm personally not a big fan of dividend or value stocks, but I have to say this ETF has it all. It's cheap, has an amazing 10-year performance, even beating the S&P 500, and it has a high tech exposure. So there you have it, four Charles Schwab ETFs that are very different, but all best in class in their own category. We looked at one US focused, one global, one real estate and one dividend ETF. But what do you actually think? Which one is your favorite Charles Schwab ETF? Have I missed one that should have been in this list? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you. If you like what you saw and you want to support this channel, then please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.